Welcome back YouTube. Welcome back to the NFA Review channel. We have a new toy in from Silencer Shop, the new Sig Sauer SRD 762 rifle suppressor. So pretty neat world we're in so far guys. I mean we have Ruger, Sig, uh, Daniel Defense. We have a lot of companies that uh, used to just manufacture firearms that now joined the suppressor world. So again, pretty neat times that we're in. So let's go ahead and break this thing down, find out what makes it unique, and then we'll head out to the range and see just how it does. Okay, the Sig Sauer SRD 762QD comes in at an overall length of 7 inches, a diameter of 1.625 inches, and weighs 17 ounces. Uh, it's constructed of Inconel 718, more on that later, very strong material. It's rated up to 300 wood mags, so everything in between all the way down to 556, all the way up to 300 wood mag. Um, the finish is a uh, really nice matte PVD finish. It's very evenly applied uh, and hopefully it maintains its durability. It should withstand mag dumps pretty easily. Um, it is full auto rated and as far as DB reduction, SIG tested this on 308 and got 138 decibels which is under the OSHA standard of 140 uh, which is where your hearing damage will occur. Now 300 blackout which is what I'm mainly going to use this for, uh, it metered at uh, 131 with supersonic ammo and 120 with the subs. Now I have heard that this has a really pleasant low tone. More on that in a minute. I th we think we know how they achieved that. Um, as far as purchasing one yourself, retails at 745, uh, but it is actually on sale at Silencer Shop for 769. So, guys, under 700 dollars for a can this stout. Um, Again, I said it earlier at the beginning of this video, pretty interesting times that we're living in. Let's go ahead and check out what makes this can so unique. Many of you have already noticed this can looks a little different than cans you're used to seeing already. And that's because there is no outer tube, okay, covering the baffle stack. So what you see here is the actual individual welded baffles. This is a tubeless design. SIG is really good at welding, okay? They have really high-end equipment and they've, they've figured it out down to a T. Um, so they, went, they threw away the uh, outer tube. You get a really interesting looking can. Um, I didn't like it at first sight. Uh, kind of looks like a little booster rocket ready to take off. So yeah, the tubeless design, so you're gonna save weight and they could take that internal volume and expand it. So you have you know, the same diameter can that other manufacturers are using with an outer tube, uh, but now you can actually expand it and have more volume. Something else they did uh, that was awesome and uh, good for down the road for you guys that are going to invest in a tax stamp on this is that they imprinted the information for the suppressor and the serial number in the blast area here. So your muzzle uh, mount sits right here and it's going to protect this first cone. The probability of a bullet coming out and making a 90 degree turn right at the end of your um, QD mount is pretty much non-existent. So basically what does that mean? That means if it comes out between here and here, you send your can back to SIG, they lop that section off and re-weld on a whole new baffle stack, give it a paint job and mail it back to you. Back to the volume. So inside this baffle stack, each baffle, and there's 13 of them, they scrammed, they shoved a lot of them in here. Um, each one of them is ported, uh, which is something I'm not used to seeing. I've been shooting suppressors for a little over 10 years. Um, and on rifle cans, you really don't see uh, the porting. I don't know how many ports there are. Let's see if I can get a light in here. Now, there's quite a bit, actually. Looks like every half an inch, there is a port that goes to the next baffle. Um, now, what that's gonna do is lower the back pressure. So you're not gonna have overrunning gas issues, which we all hate and you're not gonna have a lot of gas in the shooter's face. The gun's gonna be a lot more pleasant and enjoyable. Um, and very important in my field, the tone uh, surrounding this can is probably gonna be really nice. We've already heard that it has a deeper tone and I guarantee that's attributed to the porting and the larger uh, width, the volume that this can has. Because um, what happens is when you over cork 
the barrel on a high pressure cartridge, that pressure's gotta go somewhere and only some of it's gonna come out the front of the gun, okay? So the rest of it's gonna go where? Back in your gas system, back out the rear of the bolt area, into your nose and the right side of the gun where the ejection port is damaging your right ear. Um, so there's nothing more than I hate than an over gas can that is louder at the freaking ejection port than the muzzle. So I'm really interested to see uh, how this performs in real life. Another uh, first innovation, uh, I've never seen anything like it, is their actual mount. And I have here on loan a factory uh, MCX 300 Blackout SBR. And I already have the mount on here. I'll show you some close-ups of what it looks like. Uh, but it's really neat. When I first took it out of the box, I'm like, what are they trying to do here? Well, it's actually a two-piece design here. So you, you screw and secure the actual base. And then you have these front sections that you can adjust with a crush washer to replace it with a flash hider section or a brake. And you can actually use that crush washer to orient uh, the porting on the muzzle brake. So really interesting design. It, it was cool because now you don't need to really time the, the actual mount that attaches to the barrel, if that makes sense. You just screw this on as tight as it goes. It has a taper mount, so it's not going to go anywhere. Um, you don't need to worry about rock, rock set or anything like that. And then you attach the front section here and then you just time it. So pretty neat. I've never seen anything like that. And um, the taper actually leads me to my next topic. So this, the way this can mount, so that's pretty nice. It just holds itself up. <laughs> How this can mounts is a taper. So you have a taper on the inside of the suppressor that corresponds with the slight taper you see here on the mount. So when you thread this on the Acme threads, those two surfaces are gonna pull themselves towards each other. Now technically, you just tighten it up, they really don't even need this secondary latch here. Once you tighten that up, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's just the way it works. Uh, but they do have this AAC type latch, okay? But there's no teeth, so it doesn't engage any teeth. Um, and that's gonna ensure that it's not gonna back off under full auto fire or anything like that. So to remove the can, if it's really stuck, it actually has these grooves machined into the mount that you can, you can slide their wrench that they send with it in here. It's pretty cool how they thought ahead here. That wrench will actually engage that latch and open it out of the way, and then you can use the leverage to remove the suppressor. Once you have it loose, it'll kind of catch here. Okay, that's where that latch is going to save your butt. Push it in again, and it comes right off the Acme threads. So very effective taper mount. Uh, that can is not going to go anywhere. And something else that it does that's very important is maintain perfect alignment with the uh, bore aperture each time you mount it, which equates to less or minimal point of impact shift. Uh, this is uh, touted to be one of the most accurate rifle suppressors out that is a QD mounting system. So that's pretty cool. All right, little recap before we hit the range. You got a sub $700 suppressor. It's capable of shooting uh, Magnum calibers, full auto rated. It's backed by a company that's definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. Really neat tubeless design and uh, supposedly has a really good tone, which we will test out right here on my channel shortly. Uh, today's uh, host rifle is going to be the MCX factory S uh, SBR they sent with the suppressor on loan. And then uh, it actually came with the side folding stock, which I didn't care for. So reached out to my friends over at Optics Planet. They hooked it up with the collapsible telescoping stock, which I actually prefer a lot more. Uh, today, we're going to use two different types of ammo. I usually only use Freedom. Uh, SIG sent some along, uh, so I'm going to run some of their ammo and the Freedom Munitions Hush. So we're going to run subsonic to subsonic and see which one has the better tone or if we can even differentiate which one's better. Uh, so yeah, it's enough talking. Let's go ahead and hit that range see what this sucker sounds like.
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, let's go ahead and start from the top. Let's, let's start from the host. So this is a factory MCX SBR. Uh, now this is supposed to go back to the factory. Uh, I do have the option to buy it at a discounted price. I think I am going to take them up on that offer. Uh, I didn't think I would like this as much as I did. Um, I didn't even mess with the gas settings and it ran fine, unsuppressed and suppressed. Uh, no gas to the face. I had a little bit of uh, oil cook off because it actually shipped dry and right before I filmed it today, put a couple drops of uh, oil in there and it was cooking off a little bit. But um, other than that, I, I didn't have any actual gas in the face, which uh, you shouldn't have with this type of setup anyway. Uh, I like the collapsible stock. It wasn't too bad with the cheek weld. Um, one thing that needs definite improvement is the trigger. This trigger's got to go, so I'll drop something else in there. Now, as far as the suppressor, um, I was trying to differentiate here filming uh, which ammo was quieter, the SIG ammo or the 220 grain Hush ammo from Freedom Munitions. And it was hard to do in between cuts because I was doing off camera. I would load up a mag with the SIG, shoot that, stop the camera, reset, do it again with the Hush. So I had about two or three minutes in between takes. So at the end here, I decided to do five rounds of supersonic through the suppressor, and then five rounds of uh, the SIG, and then followed by five rounds of Hush. So go ahead and take a look at that, and let me know what you think. All right, um, I don't know if it translates well on camera, but here in person, the Hush has a very, very slight edge on it. Um, I don't have a chronograph with me today. It might be shooting a little slower. The gun felt just a little bit more sluggish, but it felt good and had a little bit deeper of a tone. It sounded really, really cool in person. So I'm gonna give the slight edge to the Freedom Munitions Hush ammo on that one. Zero discomfort shooting any subsonic ammo through this suppressor and it actually helped negate the recoil quite a bit. I mentioned earlier the cheek weld here on the host. It's a little snappy when shooting unsuppressed. Um, you can kind of feel it bouncing off your cheekbone. Uh, when you threw the can on there it became a much more uh, softer impulse against your cheek so that's something to note as well. Um, so yeah it did the job. You know I really wasn't sure if I was gonna like it when I was done and uh, in, in between takes again I was setting up at one location doing unsuppressed and then suppressed and then I had to move so I had to unmount the can while it was a little warm. Thank you Silencer Shop for the oven mitt. Um, and actually, you know, it came on and off really super quick and simple and I don't know, I guess it's just, uh, I like it. It's a really good can and it sounded great. So uh, take it for what you will. Hopefully it translates well to you guys back at home. I wanna give a big shout out to all my sponsors on my channel. Guys, click below. I'm gonna have a drop down of every sponsor and every promo code that I currently have active right now. There's a lot of them. Uh, so go ahead and hook them up. I don't get a kickback or anything, but it kind of scratches their back. They scratch mine by you know, loaning me ammo for the reviews so it doesn't break my bank so I can get these reviews out to you guys faster. So go ahead and hook them up with some business. And if you're watching this video before December 2017, I have a huge event coming up at Reload and Tarpon Springs, Florida. A lot of vendors coming out. Harley's gonna be in there in the parking lot with some bikes. We're gonna have flamethrowers out there in the parking lot. And then inside, we're gonna have all your favorite companies demoing their guns and ammo to all you guys. So if you wanna check it out, I'll have that link to the uh, event in the description as well. All right, guys, that's enough for today. See you next time.